Hello and welcome to this uh, interesting video. You know, we're going to be talking about love. And uh, many people say, well, what is love? If you ask a thousand people, each one will give you a different definition. But the thing is that no one knows really what love is. Why? Because love cannot be defined. Love is not a thing. Love is the truth itself. Love is spirit. Love is being. Love is God. You know, when we say I am, and you put your name after it, you're individualizing and separating yourself. But in truth, this I am is love. But the way to begin to understand love is to see how your viewpoint differs from another. And your viewpoint is a limited seeing of this I am that you are, based, of course, on your experience, conditioning, religious beliefs, tradition, etc., etc. But here is the key question I would like to pose to you right now about love. What is not love? And you won't find a thing, because love is the oneness interconnection, interdependence, interrelationship of all that is. Another thing about love is that we see it on so many different levels. And because of that, we are convinced that that is love. But love has no limit. In fact, in its ultimate sense, love is not an emotion. Love is being. So let's say this way. What is your viewpoint? We can break it down into four stages. There's physical love, mental love, emotional love, and spiritual love. Okay, physical love is anything to do with sex, uh, passion, sexual desire, infatuation, physical attraction, and so on, which is very, very common, as you know. Mental love is communication, sharing, companionship, uh, and similar interests. It has to do with, in other words, communicating between two people. And then there is emotional love. Emotional love is what we refer to psychologically as needy love. It is attachment, family, sharing, belonging, having a family, having children, having a lover, someone that makes you feel okay. In fact, when you say to yourself, I love to have someone because I don't feel good being just by myself, that's a need for emotional love. But then we have spiritual awakening, spiritual love. And that's when we get very close to what love is. And the interesting thing about spiritual love is that it contains the physical, the mental, and the emotional in it. It becomes complete. In fact, spiritual love is the true love because when you love someone and make love to them, there isn't just physical attraction and mental attraction and emotional neediness, but it's complete because you recognize the other as yourself. <clears throat> and that's the completion of love. So, um, without much ado, I'd like you to watch this first video and how it relates to the I am of you as being love. Okay? And enjoy! So, what we call identity usually is what I think I am. But then there is a real identity. And that is the I that is not personal. So whenever a person says I, they mean themselves. They mean their ego part. I am Bert, for example. You see, that's a concept. I've been given a name and a form and have identified with this name and form. That doesn't mean that doesn't, that that's not around. But my true nature, when I look at the album when I was a baby, I remember that I was that baby. 
at least I've been told I was that. <laughs> so therefore that baby became a teenager and then it became a man and I've been through the body went through three recycles, so did the personality, so did everything else been recycled. But what makes me know that I am that person in the album? When everything changed, I cannot say this, this body is real because this body was a teenager. It was totally different, absolutely different than it is now, or as a baby. So what makes me know that I was that child in the album? Hmm? Memory? No. Memory is changing. Uh, yeah, okay, being told, but but there's there's a continuity of awareness. Okay. You don't feel, I, was it? You don't feel any different. Really, really. You don't feel different. There's that oh, very good. There, you don't feel different. It's just like I've said this before, but I'll say for those hearing it for the first time. If you look into the mirror, and every minute is is a year. After 20 minutes, 20 years have gone by, your body has changed tremendously, everything around you is decaying and dropping off, but you're still the same being looking in the mirror. Your face is different, your body is different, everything around you is different, but the same looking, and you, you're not different. The body is different, you see? And if you happen to be in poor shape, you really feel it. You feel old age. But the, the thing is that you're still the same. If you didn't have a mirror and you didn't know about years, you'd still, you still feel the same all the time. You don't see the change. And that's why change is not real. The changeless is more real. Because it is the changeless that is constantly, continually, in a constant state of awareness. And that is what is real. And that is your reality. Now, if you identify with that, that would be your identity. But normally, we identify with that which is transitory, right? Which is a memory, which comes and goes. I identify with my body, I identify with my name, I identify with my accomplishments, I identify with what I've been told, my, with my religion, with my nationality, etc., etc., etc. But in truth, I am awareness. And when we get down to that awareness, we find, what is it? love itself. Hello again. I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. And now, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> um, when we come to love, we will find that all we are seeking is love. Not wanting attention, wanting self-recognition, wanting to feel important, wanting to be, wanting to belong, uh, share your life uh, it's all a need for love but now we come to what makes our life work or not and there are two aspects what makes your life work it's very very simple so you're either love you're loving in other words you're expressing that love that you really are because the I am is love you are love so you're either expressing that love with whoever and wherever and you experience you meet or you're needing love needing love is psychological pain for example um, as a hypnotherapist I've every single woman I have met is really seeking deep inside or maybe obvious <laughs> that she's looking for a, a mate, a lover, her perfect soulmate, so to speak. But this needy love, and please, um, I'm pausing here because it's so important, is what causes all the emotional pain. In fact, if you were to study what depression is, or even anger, which is really a form of control, uh, all states of emotional dysfunction all emerge from needing love. Why? Because you're creating conflict between the conscious and subconscious mind. Your conscious mind wants a relationship, but the subconscious mind is saying, ah, you want love, therefore you are not love. 
So in a way, your needing love is denying your true nature. And that's how it works. So, whenever you meet someone because you need love, then after a short period of time conflict will arise because there will be fear of rejection fear of losing that love fear of uncertainty insecurity lack of safety and fear of intimacy will start to emerge automatically because you're not loving someone you're needing that, their love and there's a vast difference and please know the difference Loving is a freedom. Loving is a joy. Love is being who you are and does not require self-protection and self-defense. It's egoless, really. But needy love is just all ego and it doesn't work. And then we wonder why most marriages don't last, why most relationships break up, why there is often so much conflict and it's difficult. And, of course, we can understand why we are conditioned that way, because even our religions teach us, if you don't follow my rules, you'll commit a sin. So we suffer guilt. Some religions have even told us that sex is dirty, unholy. And, of course, being brought up with such thoughts and feelings, how can you help but not feel inadequate? unsafe and secure. So, listen to the following video and hopefully you'll gain a lot from it. Watch. The thing that I emphasize most of the time is know the difference between thought and awareness. Another way of putting it is love and the need for love. If you want to understand the psychology of all human suffering, know the difference between love and the need for love. Love is complete. Love is total. You see? But the moment you need love, do I look alright? Will people love me? Will I make a success of it? What if they laugh at me? What if I go in that relationship and nothing happens, or he won't like me, or we're always needing love, always, always, always. But what if we relax and says whatever is, is, you know, and we just, just relax and let things happen, because nothing happens by chance anyway. You see, won't that be beautiful to just relax and be? And then everything begins to flow, and then you begin to see something else happen. You begin to love like you never knew was possible to love because as you forget yourself your partner becomes you and you begin to see them in a different light in a different state in a different you know and that's true freedom though. that's true freedom yeah yeah that is real freedom you see such beautiful things yeah, that's true and uh, that, that, that's it, you see. You cannot be free until you love. Because when you love, there's no you anymore. Now, that's scary for some people who believe they are an ego, right? But do you know the greatest, most beautiful thing is when you realize you're nobody and nothing because you're everything? The greatest feeling I've had was when I realized I'm a human being. This was uh, quite a few years ago. And I realized that there's really no birth at all, it's just an appearance, it's just a, a, a play, you know? Being is playing the role of birth. Uh, here we are again, you've seen both videos, and now we're going to sum it all up. The I am of you is love itself. When you begin to understand this, and you see everyone as I am, well of course they are, <laughs> everyone is I am, um, then you begin to see others as yourself. It is then you begin to understand love, oneness. In this oneness, if you hurt another, you hurt yourself. If you think, if you judge others, there is judgment in you. 
See, whatever you do to others, you do to yourself, and vice versa. However you think about yourself, you're going to be thinking about others. See, when love begins to flower in you, then it's a win-win situation, wherever you go, wherever you are, whatever you do. So, hopefully that this has been of help to you. Uh, please watch it as often as you can, just to implant the knowing that love is complete. Love is holy. Love is sacred. Love is God itself. And your nature is that very love. And is only through loving and choosing love instead of fear. And your life become abundant, successful, and happy. Thank you for watching.